Other terms, open source software and free software, the same or interchangeable? That's our topic for today. So I was having an interesting conversation in a comment section on a YouTube page, and uh, someone made a, a statement, being open source and free, as in freedom, are not the same thing. And here's my response, and I basically said, yes, basically most open source uh, projects are referred to as FOSS projects or free and open source projects, blah, blah, blah. It's on the screen. And then he goes ahead and responds with another article with an article from the GNU project written by Richard Stallman. We'll get to that in a minute. And then I'm not gonna go over the whole conversation, but then uh he goes on to say, Well, even the FOSS acronym proves that free and open source software implies they are different. Now, we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. And then he goes on to say, this article gives a clear link to the official definition of open source and explains how it differs from the f that of free software. Which is a philosophy of Richard Stallman, by the way. But And then he continues... Let me put this into simple terms, and then he mentions the NSOA, which is the NASA Open Source Agreement, which isn't even a license. It's an agreement to open source projects by, developed by NASA. And if you look at the GitHub, they are released under the Apache license, which is a free license, which he kind of proved my point. Now, he is right. There are some open source licenses that are not quote-unquote free, such as the open WACOM license that doesn't allow you to modify the source code and uh, create modified versions for your personal use. It doesn't allow that. However, there are very, very few programs that use such licenses. There are a few of them, and they're more, and my point was, they're the exception and not the rule. Really. Um, I can probably count on like one or two hands how many programs I know that use such licenses. It's not very many. Um, however, uh, most open source are free and open source. Allow you to modify the source code, make derivative works, base your, redistribute works, all that stuff. Most of them are and uh, that was basically my point of all this. Now we're going to go ahead and jump to the desktop. I'm going to go over some aspects of this article by Richard Stallman. I think we've all seen this article, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. And I'm going to point out some things and my philosophy of what free software should be. Now he is right. There are some open source licenses that are not quote-unquote free, such as the open WACOM license that doesn't allow you to modify the source code and uh, create modified versions for your personal use. It doesn't allow that. However, there are very, very few programs that use such licenses. There are a few of them, and they're more, and my point was, they're the exception and not the rule. Really. Um, I can probably count on like one or two hands how many programs I know that use such licenses. It's not very many. Um, however, uh, most open source are free and open source. Allow you to modify the source code, make derivative works, base your, redistribute works, all that stuff. Most of them are... And uh, that was basically my point of all this. Now we're going to go ahead and jump to the desktop. I'm going to go over some aspects of this article 
by Richard Stallman. I think we've all seen this article, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. And I'm going to point out some things in my philosophy of what free software should be. And uh, I, I will, as a, as a uh, little disclaimer, I'm not 100% on board with Stallman's idea, but we'll get into that in a minute. So let's uh, explore what free and open source mean. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump to the desktop and look at this article and a couple of others and explore the uh, concept of free and the concept of open source to determine the difference and determine my opinion on free and open source, etc. Now, here's the article that was referenced with uh, by my uh, person I was conversing with. It's called Why Open Source Misses the Point of Free Software. And we're just going to scroll down. I'm not going to read this whole article. It's really, really long. But I will link it in the description along with everything else I'm referencing. Um, but we are just going to go here and read part of practical differences between free and open source softwares. In practice, open source stands for criteria a little looser than f those of free software. As far as we know, all existing released free software source code would qualify as open source. Nearly all open source software is free software, which was my point, but there are exceptions. First, some licenses are too restrictive. So they do not qualify as free licenses. For example, like I, the open Wacom license, is, which is the one I mentioned, is not free because its license do, does not allow the making of a modified version and using it privately. Fortunately, few pro programs use such licenses. Second, when a program's source code carries a weak license, He's talking about something like the MIT license. One without copyleft. We'll, we'll go into copyleft in a minute. Its executables can carry additional non-free conditions. Microsoft does the same with Visual Studio, for example. Um, yeah, basically, Microsoft said our executable is proprietary. That The way we distribute it is proprietary. But you can do with the source what you want. Uh, I'd still call that free software because the open source you can you can make free software out of it. I would call that free software, but he doesn't. And uh, he he goes on to say, if these executables fully correspond to the release sources, they qualify as open source. But not as free software. However, in this case, users can compile the source code to make free and dis distribute free executables. I think he's delving into a little bit too many technicalities here. So let's go ahead, let's dive into copyleft and what free software with copyleft is. Copyleft. Is defined here is so, uh, we're just going to define copyleft right here basically uh, certain kinds of rules rules about the manner of distributing free software are acceptable when they don't conflict with the central freedoms which is the freedom to distribute uh, let's see actually, uh, that's actually the four central freedoms the freedom to run the program as you wish the freedom to study how the program works and change it. The freedom to redistribute copies so you can help others. And the freedom to dis distribute on your modified versions. That's the gist of it. I'm not reading them verbatim, but that's the gist of it. So, uh, so co uh, certain kinds of rules about the manner of distributing free software are acceptable when they don't conflict with the central freedoms. For example, copy left. Very simply stated, is a rule when that when redistributing the programs, you cannot add restrictions to deny other people the central freedoms. This rule does not apply. This rule does not conflict with the central freedoms, 
rather it protects them. Okay, so basically you can add a rules of saying you have to keep whatever you do, you have to keep it free and open source. That's the gist of copyleft. And um, let's just say uh, the GNU license, well, the, the GPL license is a copyleft license. And the copyleft license, the GPL states that if you uh, release something under the GPL, any derivative works, you have to. You have to release it under a under the GPL. You cannot release it under another license. That's copyleft. In a nutshell, basically, there are a couple exceptions, but that's couple that's copyleft in a nutshell. And um, so um, but um, still uh, there are other licenses as well, such as the MIT license. And he goes on to say. Non copyleft software like the MIT license, which is basically do whatever you want with this, I don't care what you do with it, is ethical too. See categories of free software for a description of how free software, copyleft software, and other categories of software relate to each other. Well, we're just going to look at this diagram right here. And um, as you can see right here, you have free software and proprietary software on two. Now, um, as you can see, you have public domain and shareware and free downloaded software. These are on proprietary software side. Now, here you have free software with public domain software with source. Software under a lax permissive license, like the MIT license or a couple other licenses as well. As a matter of fact, a lot of free licenses are non copylefted copy lefted software is under open source software as you can see this is open source software and software under the GPL and as you can see open source software overlaps into proprietary software a little bit these are the exceptions to the rule that are not free software they're like open Wacom I'd call that a proprietary license so literally and uh, literally, this is this diagram explains what free and open software is, what open source proprietary programs, as I would call it, are, and other types of proprietary software. Now, um, I don't even know why I have that open, so we're just going to close that out. I have that open for other reasons um so just ignore that <laughs> um but the thing is that is the, the gist of what he was saying is there are a small amount of programs that are quote unquote open sourced but you can't do anything with that with it but i wouldn't necessarily call that open source i just call that proprietary software that you can see the source code on that's the, basically the gist of it. Um, that was basically my point in all this. So no, 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 not all free software is o all free software is open source, but not all open source is free software. I would agree with that point, but the thing is, open source people. A lot of people when people talk about open source, talk about free software. And I can agree with that stance, mostly because that is generally the rule. Not, and, and the few programs that are, are the exception. So, um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that likes, and go ahead and comment. And as always, thank you to my Patreons, and have a nice night or day, or whatever time you are watching this. If you like this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Also, consider following me on my social media links below. And if you really, really liked it, check out these videos that are listed on your screen.
Have a nice day, and thank you for watching The Penguin Revolution.